but it wasn't. It hey, was R.W., definitely... I hate to say it, we're out of time. Again, why don't you mention your latest book and where they can find it, and then I'm going to have to cut you loose, my friend. Okay, uh, The Gift, the Curse, Amazon, uh, primary spot uh, that you can find it on. Uh, you can download it on Kindle or, or get the paperback. Um, you know, me, myself, I'm a paperback person, but... Uh, other than that, uh, you can go to all the different websites uh, for your, you know, wherever you buy your books at, and it should be there. Uh, cool. Resurrection, I'm finishing up on, and as soon as I do, it's going to go off to the publisher and come out sometime in the very beginning of 2020. Okay, R.W., like always, keep in touch because you are a friend of mine, and, and stay out of yep. trouble, and do me a favor, don't die again. Yeah, uh, I bye bye, R.W. <laughs> okay, R.W., you take care. Good night, guys. Night. Anyway, we're going to go to break. We'll be back in about two and a half minutes. And then in about within five minutes, we're going to have Sam Ritchie talking about little people, a Bigfoot and portals and all that stuff. You're listening to me, Gary, on Night Dreams Talk Radio. And my friend James Krishbaum is with us here tonight, too. Journey some ask themselves why the big time has passed them by. They want it all and they want it now. No need to wonder how or why they decide to make a connection with the bear of light from the other side. It's a self-centered new world reflection. It's a one-way ticket for a hell of a ride. They're making a deal. Whether down at the crossroads or Hollywood and Vine, they're making a deal. paranormal story you want to share on night dreams talk radio you could be a guest email us at night dreams talk radio at gmail.com you're listening to my friend gory anderson on night dreams talk radio the best in paranormal radio well i try to be but i'm not the best but i'm definitely on the radio hey james are you still there Yes, I am. How are you? How are you doing so far tonight, Gary? Well, and on my second glass of special tea. Well, you know what I like. I got this little, you know, uh, water cooler in here. It gives hot and cold water, and I got my tea bags. I got my sugar, and I got my special sauce to put in the tea. <laughs> Sounds like Irish tea. <laughs> yeah, I guess it could be. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> But, you know, could you imagine, like, somebody that has been living on years of hum- on human blood and, and happen to have a group of, I mean, just think about it. If one of those people has some type of disease, they can give you hepatitis, they can give you AIDS, it can give you who knows, and you're dependent on having to feed on people, that is really, really scary. And this guy, you know, pretty much seems normal. But, I mean, again, they have the, the fetish to consume human blood. And he said at the start, it wasn't where he was consuming human blood full time. It just kind of, all of a sudden, it got to the point where he was consuming more and more, and he lost interest in food, and then he quit eating any type of solid food. So his whole life, and it depends on human blood, not, you know, animal blood. It, that is scary. And how many friends would you have to have to say, hey, are you free tonight? I'm really hungry. You want to come over? Right. And, you know, there is a name for that. It is like some kind of a disease, so to speak. I can't think of the name of it, but 
Yeah, and, and you know, if you are drinking somebody's blood that's, you know, did a lot of drugs or alcohol or, like you said, got some disease, you're going to feel the effects of it or come down with something. So it's not a um, a very safe thing to be into anyway. Well, it could be. That's the scary part, you know, that, you know, you, you, you get to the point where you can't eat solid. And I asked, I said, did you ever try to go back and eat solids? And he goes, I've tried and I can't hold any solids down, only blood. And I just, from the standpoint, could I, could you imagine? I mean, how do you find people that are willing to come over and donate blood on a regular basis? I mean, wouldn't you? They have a whole bunch of scars on them and all that stuff from doing it. I mean, I, I, I just can't imagine, you know, of, uh, of that happening. Right. And, you know, there is a lot of... There's a lot of groups of people. They they know each other. There's there's a lot of big groups of them in uh, like L.A. and uh, New Orleans and stuff, and actually clubs and bars and stuff where they meet and do these type things. And yeah, I would think like you're saying, it'd be so much so dangerous. Just the uh, the germs and the the blood diseases and and a whole lot could go wrong there. Definitely, just just by picking yourself every day, you get some kind of blood disease or infection or something. I don't know. I don't have enough friends who would ever come over and feed me. I, I just don't understand how somebody could get into the, you know, the, the desire to want to consume human blood, and 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 it evidently isn't doing any good for the guy because he can't go. What he said, he can't even go outside because he's allergic now to the sun. And when I talked to the, the doctor at the time, who's trying to treat him, uh, said that the guy is extremely anemic. And uh, as well, other than that, but I mean, it could not go outside because of, you know, his condition. I mean, I, I, I don't know. It just do some of these people actually think they are vampires? I know that there are, I've met people that thought they were that I've been around people where they can take, you know, where you feel really, you know, in a good mood. You're not tired, but then all of a sudden somebody walks in the room and you feel drained. Or like as soon as they walk in the room and they make eye contact with you, if you ever know what I mean, if you ever had that happen to you. Oh, yeah, those are, uh, they call them energy vampires. Those are all around, and, yeah, they're out there. And, and yeah, I, it's some kind of mental thing, I think, that to uh, crave blood and stuff, and it turns into what happens is you, over time your body – it just gets used to it, and, and, and it repulses food and stuff. You'd have to train your whole mind, body, and spirit all over again. I don't even know if it's even possible if there's even any recorded cases of somebody coming back from that. I don't, I don't th- know. I don't think so, and I wonder what the average life expectancy is. I, want, I wonder also if it changes your DNA, because, you know, huh. I, I think it could t- change your DNA if you're consuming hu- human blood on a regular basis. I, 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 I think it could. It sounds. It'd have to do something to you for sure. I know. Even eating certain foods can actually change the structure of some of your DNA. Hey, Sam, are you there? I certainly am. How are you doing tonight? Oh, not too bad. Well, I'm, well, I'm, <laughs> well, why don't you? Tell, How you doing, James? Hey, Sam. Well, uh, Sam, why don't you tell everybody who you are and what you do, and tell everybody about your new podcast you have. Okay, cool. Well, <clears throat> I'm going to just relate what I have been doing recently instead of going into a long spiel. But I am focused right now on d- discovering the secrets of the Cascade Mountains and all the strange events that are happening up here. And, um, you know, when I'm, it looks like my computer froze up. Oh. As long as it wasn't Every time updated. we get on the phone, it's like the show freezes up. <laughs> anyway, they, the side story of that is that I have a little community radio station here, so we'll have to take care of that after I get off. So we'll, we'll deal with that a little bit later. Anyway, um, I'm someone that's doing Bigfoot research in the last five years, and not because I necessarily wanted to, but... I was kind of thrust into it because I had personal experiences up here. And I had a a really strong desire to to know what was going on because it was happening to me on a more and more frequent basis, you know, the the encounters. So everything's morphed into basically a website to to support my research, planetsasquatch.com. 
And I ended up establishing a Facebook group early on and, of course, a YouTube channel. So, And it's good to do that. It was good for me to do that because it allowed me to document my research over the last five years. Okay. So are you guys still there? Oh, yeah. What well, 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 okay, I well, no, you're I'm talking now, not curious, but Up in the mountains here, sometimes things all drop out at the same time. So that's, you know, sitting up here at this cabin, there's all sorts of weird things that happen uh, to the saying, Internet, to the electricity and everything like that. So I had to be, like, I could be talking for five minutes and nobody's been on the phone for that long. <laughs> hey, Sam, I got can, yeah. can you hear me? Yes, you're hey, fine. Hey, Sam, can you still hear me? Yes, I can. Hey, hey Sam, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, well, you can buy this cell phone for just forty nine ninety five. <laughs> okay. Oh. Can you hear me now? Yeah, oh, yes, I can't I can. say that, can I? Yeah, I guess you can. we just did. <laughs> uh, so uh, this this research has just been going on, and, uh, and, and I've gotten more into a retirement mode that's afforded me a, a lot more time. Uh, so... I've uh, been spending more time doing this research, and it kind of covers various areas. It started out with Bigfoot, but it kind of veered into, uh, you know, portals. As a matter of fact, uh, my new show tomorrow night, which I'll give that information a little bit later, uh, is two hours of solid interdimensional portals in the Cascade Mountains. <clears throat> and I cover a lot of resource information from my past. People I know, experiences of a friend of mine who's, uh, who's been camping with us, who's sitting in his car, while he was sitting in his car, experienced various dimensional shifts into different places. And that's probably the most bizarre experience I've ever heard up here. Okay? Little people... That was part of the picture a little bit later on. Now, you know, it's one thing to talk to people about Bigfoot. I think there's kind of a an acceptance for that because it's been so popularized by TV shows and things like that. Little people, not so much yet. And when I started coming across them in pictures and certain indications of them uh, being around... Uh, I hesitated to talk about that, you know. I thought they were going to throw the net over me when I started talking about Bigfoot. I'm certain the medics would have been coming after me with, for the little people. You see, so, but but I uh, I survived that. I I finally got the courage up and says, well, I don't really care what public opinion tells me about this. I I'm more interested in the truth, and when I see these things, I'm not going to keep it to myself. I mean, I don't have any qualms about exposing the truth about anything. And so that's why I'm move, moving forward. And now my my main vehicle at this point, because it's I'm putting all my energy into it, is the show called Greenwater Nights, hosted by yours truly here, Sam Ritchie. And I am focused on interviews of locals that have true experiences and each week, I try to put the pieces to the puzzle together as to how all the stuff is connected together. How are Bigfoots and little people and portals and UFOs and ETs, how are they all connected together? You know, so it's like time travel, too. Matter of fact, I'll be talking about that aspect of portals tomorrow as well. You know, tomorrow at 7 o'clock. <clears throat> so... But I just sent a, uh, something came up that was very strange. Um, I wanted to, before the show, I wanted to, I didn't get a chance to do this, but I wanted to try to put together some audio files that were loud enough where I would have sent you the audio file, and you could have possibly played it on the air, okay? And... Uh, so what I have done is sent Oh I'm sorry, I'm just looking at the phone. You guys are too quiet. <laughs> well, I, I don't want I don't want to overtalk you. 
And, no, yeah. no. That, that, you know, it's just, I'm just happy. That, that momentary feedback there every so often. But but I was looking at my phone. Like, oh, you know, I, I kind of look. <laughs> you know what happens when I look at my stuff. 